Hello and welcome to our very first meeting of 2021. Today is January 7th and we're here for the Brentwood Darlington Neighborhood Association Virtual Public Board Meeting. Welcome everyone. Uh, quick update, what? Who all is here? Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll do introductions, Stephanie, don't worry. Oh, good. Thank you. Uh, quick update to our agenda. I um, want to make sure we get the treasurer's report before we have our discussion about what we want to do in 2021 so that we're um, aware of what our capabilities are financially. So just heads up to Lynn that I'm going to put you on the spot there right before 730 or before we talk there. Um, oh, as usual, you can access the slideshow and the agenda at brentwood-darlington.org slash about slash public dash records and Maria will put that in the chat. Uh, just the quick overview we've been doing that our meetings are still virtual right now. We're using Zoom, we use a slideshow and you can get the access code for this through our newsletter or our Facebook group. And Maria will put both the sign up link and the Facebook group uh, link in the chat. If you are new to Zoom and you're participating from a computer, your controls might look like this. They might look a little different, but it gives you a little bit of an idea of where you're looking for. And just a reminder to stay muted if you're not talking because it helps others hear, keeps the background noise to a minimum. If you're on a smartphone, your buttons will look similar, but they might be in somewhat different places. So just keep an eye open for those. And if you're calling in, uh, the important one you know, need to know is star six for muting and star nine if you wanna raise your virtual hand. All the links that are in the chat are also in the slideshow. So if you're on a phone, on a phone you can go get it later. All right. We'll go ahead and do welcome and introductions. I am Chelsea Powers. I'm the current chair of the Brentwood Darlington Neighborhood Association. I use she, her pronouns and obviously not my first meeting. I've been in the neighborhood about five years and I first heard about BDNA through a post about a national, national night out event. And I will just kind of go down the slider here and call folks out. And if you don't want to introduce yourself, you can just say pass. Uh, Stephanie, you're next on my list. Okay, I'm Stephanie Frederick. I'm um, head of the, uh, I'm chair of the land use committee. I've lived here for almost four years now. Uh, she, her pronouns. And I heard about BDNA before I even moved to Portland and the neighborhood associations were a prominent reason for moving here. Thank you, Chelsea. Thanks, Stephanie. Uh, Derek, you're next on my list. Sure, I'm uh, Derek Covey. I'm a board member at large. I've been in the neighborhood since 2012 uh, and been part of the board. Before that, I was in the Richmond neighborhood north of us on that board. Um, and uh, what can I say? Um, I distribute, one of the things I do is um, distribute uh, new our neighborhood brochure to all the new neighbors. My title company provides me a list of names of everybody that moves into the neighborhood and they get a magnet and a newsletter and an insert. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, Derek. Uh, Lynn, you're next on my list. Yes, I'm Lynn Reck, um, she, her, and it's not my first meeting. I've been on the board for I think three years now. I'm currently the treasurer. Um, I've been in the neighborhood for about 27 years, and I first heard of the, about the BDNA from a Facebook post. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, Maria, you're next on my screen. Um, hello, my name is Maria, she, her. Uh, this is not my first meeting. I have lived in the neighborhood for about uh, three years, and I heard about BDNA. I remembered it last time, um, actually, in one of those egg hunts in Brentwood Dining Park, and there was a little, <laughs> um, a little information there. Um, yeah, that's it. That's actually really good to know because they've been a good partner and um, have donated, and that was one of our new things: was putting uh, neighborhood stuff in the candy they gave out. So I'm glad it worked. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Kim, you're next on my, my screen here. Hi, everyone. Uh, she, her pronouns, not my first meeting. I think it's like second meeting. Um, I have lived in the neighborhood for almost four years. Uh, I'm reading off the sign. Uh, <laughs> how did I hear about BDNA? I requested some help and um, am now part of the volunteer corps of the Land Use and Transportation Committee. And uh, I think that's it for tonight. Nice to see everyone. Welcome. Shannon, you're next on my screen. Hi, everyone. My name's Shannon Kane. Uh, I'm the vice chair of the Neighborhood Association. Um, I use she, her pronouns. Um, and this is not my first meeting. I joined uh, the BDNA a couple years ago, and I've lived in the neighborhood um, for about three years now. And I own a uh, urban farm and we do plant sales and stuff. So um, I heard about the BDNA through uh, Derek's flyer and that's how I got involved. Right. Thank you, Shannon. Our brochures work. Uh, it looks like Robert, you're next on my screen. Would you like to introduce yourself? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, you'll need to be just a little louder. No. Anyway, I don't live in the neighborhood, but before the health situation got the way it is, I brought cl uh, clients from supported living for activities there. And I found out about this meeting because I was on the mailing list and I was just wondering how the organization was doing these days. Well, welcome. We're glad you joined us. And if you come and play in Brentwood Darlington, you're honorary Brentwood Darlington. So it uh, looks like Southeast Uplift is next on my list. Hi, everyone. My name is Paola. I am your neighborhood liaison through Southeast Uplift. So I've heard about Brentwood Darlington through that. Um, I don't live in the neighborhood, but my partner does. So I spend a lot of time around. Um, something important to know is that I am running the communications grant and fund this year, and we are doing things a little bit differently. So if you have any questions and concerns, definitely reach out to me. Um, I also run the newsletter for Southeast Uplift. So again, anything, any news or events you think could have more outreach, um, I'd love to hear about it. So I'll leave my contact in the chat below. Awesome. And I actually have a slide about Southeast Uplift new employees later on if you want to stay and chat oh, about perfect. it. Perfect. Yeah, sounds great. Let's see, Laura Lee, I think you're next on my screen there. I'm Laura Lee, uh, she, her, uh, not my first meeting. Um, I am secretary on the board. Um, I have, I'm on my eighth year anniversary next month of buying my house in Brentwood, Darlington. So yay. Um, but I've been in Portland about 23 years. Um, and I heard about BDNA by walking by the community center when we would go to the park and I kept wanting to peek my head in there. So. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Rebecca, you're next on my screen. I am Rebecca, um, she, her. It is my first meeting. I've lived in Brentwood, Darlington about four weeks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I heard about it on Nextdoor, and I'm um, very excited to be a part of this new community and would like to be involved. Welcome to the neighborhood. Let's get a yay. yay. <laughs> All right, uh, Mary, you're next on my list. Hi, I'm Mary Davis. Um, I've been telling you how long it I've been in the neighborhood. I'll just tell you, I have been here long enough that I have paid my mortgage off. Congratulations. Hey. Um, and I first heard about the BDNA from a flyer that I received from the Neighborhood Association regarding a, a meeting concerning the safety action team. Now that is really a long time ago and most of you have probably never heard of the safety action team, but it was a community policing effort that was jointly um, staffed by Multnomah County Sheriff's Office 
and Portland Police. So we have a long history of community policing in this neighborhood. Thank you, Mary. Um, Claudia, I think you're next on my list. I am uh, she, her, and I uh, am not in the neighborhood, but I am the president of the Multnomah County Master Gardener Association and our garden is our demonstration garden is in the neighborhood and we want it to be part of the neighborhood so uh here i am well your timing is wonderful because i have a slide for you as well tonight i've been uh emailing with uh linda i think linda? yes and she couldn't make it but i made a slide to make sure we gave you credit for your donations this year so perfect maybe you could say a few words when we get there love to all right did i miss uh oh there we go, let's see, Mary B, I think you're next. Oh, I'll pass on introductions, thank you. Thank you, um, Eli or Ellie? Sorry if I'm mispronouncing. No, Eli's right. Hi everybody, uh, my name's Eli, he, him. I am uh, Representative Jeff Reardon's uh, new legislative assistant, oh. uh, one of the team. And so I just Yay. wanted to come by and hear what folks in the neighborhood uh, had on their minds. Welcome, welcome. Lots of new folks tonight. Let's see, um, Sean, I don't think I've uh, called on you yet. Hi, I'm Sean, uh, pronouns are he, him. Uh, my first meeting was November and I'm coming up on my two year anniversary in May of uh, buying my first house uh, here. Uh, heard about BDNA on Facebook, I think. And uh, so I'm, I'm back again. Wonderful, welcome. All right, let's see. Did I miss anyone who wanted to introduce themselves before I move on? Okay, well, I had I had a suggestion. Go ahead. Shannon came with a guest, didn't she? <laughs> Maybe she could introduce her guest. Yes, Shannon, do you wanna introduce the uh, newest member of Brentwood Darlington's neighborhood? Yes, sure, just a second, sorry. <laughs> He's laying down. Uh, okay. All right. This is Wilder. <laughs> Hi, Wilder. Congratulations, <laughs> Shannon. Thank um, you. Uh, he was born on the fifteenth, so came came not long after our last meeting. So yeah. we took uh, December off. <laughs> yeah, good timing. <laughs> That's not what you want to do during all committees. Yeah. No. <laughs> All right, wonderful. Okay, anybody else that I missed? All right, we'll go ahead and move on. If you joined the meeting and I missed you, you just raise your hand and let me know. Um, and we'll go ahead and get going. Oh, did I? Oh, I just saw some new additions. Let's let these folks introduce before we move forward. Um, another Chelsea. Chelsea, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Hi. Sorry I'm late. I was struggling around on virtual world. Um, I'm Chelsea Campbell Martin. Your pronouns are she, her. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, this is my first meeting. Yes. I have lived in BD since 2017. Um, I have worked at Impact Northwest at the Brentwood Darlington Community Center since 2015. And how did I hear about it? I used to see you guys coming in and feel guilty that I wasn't attending. Um, <laughs> so I was Good. aware of it. And yeah. I also have a little question for the group at some point about um, the police presence at our office and kind of wanting to like get a quick little feel so I can report back to our um, organization too. Okay. Um, that's it. Awesome. We will uh, get to that in our like BDNA in 2021. We have some open discussion time happening. And then um, did I see, did I see Matthew join? Yeah, I just got here. Hi everyone, uh, Matthew Williams. I live very nearby. I actually took a walk through Brown Darlington this afternoon, uh, just on my daily walk. Uh, I'm with Southeast Uplift. So I manage the small grants and fiscal sponsorship program um, at your coalition office. Good to see you. And it's not my first meeting. <laughs> Welcome. We are so glad you're here. 
Okay, did I miss anybody? This might be our longest virtual introductions. I'm so excited to have so many people at the meeting. All right, we'll go ahead and jump into community announcements. Um, Learning Gardens Lab, Luke is not here, but that does lead us into our Master Gardeners update. And as I said, I've been corresponding with Linda and she let me know that they donated uh, 1200 pounds of produce to local food pantries in 2020 from the garden there. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and ask Claudia if she would like to say a few things about what's happening there right now and what's gonna happen going forward this year. Thank you very much. Um, we are restricted. Uh, we are, the Master Gardeners are underneath Oregon State University Extension Service. And so we must abide by their rules and they are, uh, they have instructed us not to be in our garden uh, at this time until the rules uh, lighten up. So we are not there. Um, when it was open, we were there. Uh, we had a late season crop. Um, and so we were still working in there. Um, we intend to get right back in there as soon as, as we can to do work in the garden. Um, if, if you haven't been there, we have uh, plots that are blueberries and raspberries. And during the summer, we have uh, vegetable beds, all different kinds of demonstrations, different kinds of raised beds. We have hedgerows and pollinator plantings. So there's a lot going on there, uh, which we will continue when we get the chance. Um, we intend uh, when we can uh, invite people into the garden, we intend to have workshops for gardening. We intend to have um, pruning demonstrations of, of planting in um, containers. Um, and so as part of the neighborhood, and we want to be part of the neighborhood, we're always looking to find out what we could do. What do the neighbors want? What are, are their interests in gardening that we could help with? So the, our mission is to educate people on home gardening. And so we're always looking for uh, ways to do that, um, either in our garden or in other, at event times, in other uh, spaces like the community center. Um, so we're here, ask us to do something. So <laughs> thanks for the time, Chelsea. Thank you. Um, and I know that uh, I've been corresponding with Linda about different <clears throat> ways to partner in the neighborhood and then all of this happened, but uh, definitely I can tell you there's interest in classes and tutorials and things like that. And um, maybe if we can't get volunteers back in the garden in mass, maybe we could do some virtual tours with Master Gardener um, volunteers there and get them up. We could use the BDNA YouTube and website to show them off. So, Chelsea, we would love to do that. We have, um, you know, we're constantly taking photographs. Um, we have a Facebook page that we, we're wanting to build up. Um, you know, we're always busy gardening, but then when this happened, we thought, gee, let's do some other stuff. So we started a Facebook page. And so, yeah, we would love to be able to do some virtual stuff. Ask us, and uh, we've got lots of volunteers who'd love to help out. Wonderful. We can uh, in incorporate that more um, when we talk about what BDNA wants to do with this year. Maybe we could have a regular gardening feature. All right. Any we're questions? There. Um, there. <laughs> yeah. Any questions on this uh, update before I move on? All right. Uh, next, I'm going to let Mary Davis take over. I made her a slide from the email she sent me, and hopefully I got that info right. The link for that video will be posted in the chat if I remember to give it to Maria. Um, if not, it is on the slideshow and available at Leach's website. Chelsea, thank you for the awesome slide. Um, there's a picture of Maylin Plummer, who is our new executive director. She'll be in residence and on the job mid-January. We're regularly closed in January for maintenance um, anyway, so she'll have a chance for at least a couple of weeks to scramble around and find out all the things that are going on and start taking some of the balls that uh, David Porter's been juggling all these years off his shoulders and, and hands 
um, and um, that, that'll probably take a little while to do that. Uh, but she has some botanical garden experience and just recently finished a fellowship at the Longwood Gardens near Philadelphia. So she has very impressive credentials and we are really excited to have somebody of her caliber to take over a very difficult job um, coming up this, and I'm looking really forward to uh, meeting her in person as well as over Zoom and uh, starting to challenge, take on some of the challenges that face us um, as we get through another year of probably COVID and, and being uh, at half mast in terms of activity at the garden. So uh, more to come. Wonderful. Please um, let her know she's welcome to attend a BDNA meeting and talk about the garden anytime she'd like. Thank you, Chelsea. And I will keep supplying you with um, Vimeos and newsletters as I get them. Yep. We love being close to our beautiful botanical garden that's not in our neighborhood, but close enough. Close enough. All right. Um, just a quick update. Uh, if you don't have a child in school, they are back open this week. And um, that means the return of nutrition services. Any child age uh, up to 18 can get free food Monday, Wednesday, Friday from three to five at select schools. And you can visit the PPS nutrition link posted in the chat to see where uh, your closest school is. If you're here in the neighborhood, all three of our schools, Woodmere, Whitman and Lane have food services. You just kind of got to look for where they are at the building. Uh, other food resources we have, just a reminder, we have the Impact Northwest Food Pantry at Woodmere, the Latino Network Food Pantry at Lane, and you can see the dates and times there. The um, unofficial neighbor supported pop-up that happens uh, at uh, my house, 60th and Ogden, and uh, my neighbor Kristen at 78th and Ogden. And then our neighbors in Woodstock have their pantry on the weekend at the All Saints Church. So just about any day of the week, you can get something to eat if you're hungry or if you know somebody who is. Any questions before I move on? All right. Uh, shamelessly stole this picture from the Southeast Uplift website, but we wanted to make sure and welcome our new Southeast Uplift folks. And I'd love to, if Machu and, um, is it Paola? Did I get that right? Paola. Hello, Paola. Um, if you want to talk about maybe a little bit about what you're doing there, and I know we intro did the introductions, but I'd love to give you both a little more time to um, let us know who you are and how we can all partner in the neighborhood. Uh, Paola, do you want to go first? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, uh, my biggest task right now is facilitating the communications fund and grants program. Um, again, we're doing things a little bit differently this year, so there might be a lot of questions about what to do or what things have changed. So that's something that I would be happy to answer questions about. We do have two upcoming workshops for the small grants and the communication grants and fund, and that's coming up in February, so that's something to look out for. Um, but I work as the communications and outreach manager for Southeast Uplift. So I do a lot of their social media and newsletter um, and communicating with other neighborhood associations and community groups, making sure we're all connected. For neighbors who aren't familiar with the neighborhood association structure, will you do a brief overview of what the communications grant does for us? Absolutely, so the communications grant is a great way to fund your group organization um, in order to update your website. And right now with COVID, it's great to have some funding for making Zoom accounts. Um, so it's a lot of uh, doing outreach to the community, flyers, postcards, if you're planning an event, um, a lot of the outreach with that. So that's what the communications fund um, is funding. Thank you. And I see that um, Machu posted the uh, links to the uh, workshops in the chat there. Thank you. And that'll lead us to uh, Machu. Do you want to talk about what you're doing at Southeast Uplift? Sure. Thank you. Um, so I'm handling the um, fiscal sponsorship program. Uh, this is something that we offer to neighborhood associations and community groups. Uh, Fretland Darlington is one of those programs. Uh, this allows you to apply for grants and receive funding, such as the communication funds. 
uh, so some other benefits. Um, you could solicit, you know, donations to Southeast Uplift earmarks for Brentwood Darlington, for example. Uh, so this allows you to take advantage of our tax exempt IRS status and have that too without having to go through the same uh, tax filing as the neighborhood organization. And also handle the uh, small grants. This is a program we offer every year. Uh, Brentwood Darlington uh, sponsored one in, in past years that has the um, Lutheran mural or um, installation at the Brentwood Darlington Community Center. Uh, that was a recipient of a past small grant. And so these programs, just, they're not meant to really um, finance organizations, but rather to just kind of give the resources to realize a small project or start a small project. Um, both that small grant fund of money is open right now. Uh, deadline is February 28th. So please uh, look into it today and get uh, attend one of the workshops I post in the chat and be happy to answer questions and support you along the way. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, Leah Fisher was our um, liaison, but she's still a Southeast Uplift and we'll st still see her for land use items. And we're excited for our new person. Um, and then uh, we have not yet gotten to meet Ian or Ann, I'm not sure how they pronounce their name um, or pronouns, but, oh, no, I saw it in the email. He, uh, he did a great job uh, really helped BDNA out by scanning our mail for us. So I just want to give props to that because that took um, a burden off of us to have to go get it. So uh, thank you <laughs> to him in absentia for that. All right, anything else about staff changes at Southeast Uplift? Awesome, all right. All right, I'm going to put Lynn on the spot to talk about our funds so we know kind of where we're at before we talk about BDNA in 2021. Go ahead, Lynn, when you're ready. Okay, um, so the re treasure report covers a couple of months because we, were, uh, we didn't have a meeting in December. Um, basically in November, we spent the last of the COVID-19 support um, that we had set aside. So we used up all the funds, a total of $1,200 uh, going to neighborhood support during COVID. Um, and then in December, we received a, a donation, uh, kind of talking to the fiscal, fiscal sponsorship um, through the, the Southeast Uplift fiscal sponsorship that was uh, earmarked for the pop-up pantry. Um, so then we received it and then we have uh, reimbursed or, you know, re submitted that out. Um, so we were basically at about, we're $8,645 um, in the account. So that's where we're at. Excellent. Any questions about our treasure report? Quick question, sorry. So we, we got a $500 donation. Is that what I'm seeing? So um, let me explain that. This is one of those times when the Neighborhood Association um, can use their fiscal sponsorship as an umbrella. A neighbor wanted to donate $500 to purchase food for the pop-up pantries that are happening on Wednesdays, and um, but he wanted it to be tax deductible. So we he donated it to BDNA through Southeast Uplift and then BDNA um, reimburse the purchases of the food that went to the pop-up pantry. So it covered, I believe, three or four um, orders from Rinella of uh, eggs and fresh produce. So quite a that few. That is so cool. That but, is so cool. Yeah. And, and I would like to talk about maybe, um, since we can do fiscal sponsorship accounts, uh, maybe we should do a pop-up pantry one to make it less work for Lynn to try and pull it out of our main one and and worry about it that way. I think though that it's the same it it's the same process. I mean, you can have and maybe Machu can can speak to that. But I think that we can say yes, we this will be for pop up pantry or we can have that set aside. But I still have to submit receipts to Southeast Uplift to get to get the money back. Mm -hmm. So that donation went to Southeast Uplift first. They received the five hundred. I submitted $500 in receipts of food, and then we got the money. Um, so I believe that we don't get the money unless we submit receipts. That was my understanding. 
the only th reason I was thinking about a separate is so that it they don't have to um, earmark it as pop-up pantry because they're separate accounts. So if people were donating directly, it wouldn't have to be filtered out from the BDNA's other donations. Does that make sense? Yes, although I believe that we do have like the general uh, fiscal sponsorship mm -hmm. account. So it's, to me, it's the same process. Then if it's not more work for you, then it's perfect. Yeah, I, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. It would be the same process. One possible benefit might be if people are only interested in supporting the pop-up pantry and didn't want the funds being used elsewhere. That might be a reason to do that. But otherwise, yeah, it's the same process. Excellent. Okay. Any other questions on our finances? Okay. So wait, uh, could we just go through the um, expenditures? Let's see. Sure. The outlet gift cards, 600. Black Future Farms Cooperative, that was a donation to, to Malcolm and... Yeah, so those are just basically, um, they weren't all done at once. They've been done throughout the summer, um, uh -huh. you know, just throughout the summer. And then I've just kind of categorized them into that. We, you know, we gave grocery outlet or we bought $600 in, in gift cards for the COVID-19 support. Um, so that was just my way of breaking it down. You know, we bought five weeks shares at the uh, LGL Harvest um, when they were doing the, the produce stand. Uh, and what did we do with the shares? Did, I, I don't they, know. They were given to uh, families in need. Fabulous. Okay, now this is just a beautiful list. You know, it's very, just very heartwarming to see this list. Yeah. So before we do move on, I do have a question, maybe, um, and I don't know if I'm going to get an email or, uh, but I haven't really heard anything about the fiscal sponsorship process for next year or the communications fund. And usually, I think it's around this time that we have to apply. Um, so I'm not sure if uh, I'm ahead or behind. <laughs> Uh, Machu and Paola, do you want to take that? I have to look when the application for fiscal sponsorship was submitted last year to give okay. you an answer, but I seem to recall, yeah, that your time for renewal is coming up very soon. Yeah, uh, it might be February. But I'll post a link in the chat for the uh, grants funds um, that has a lot more thorough information for you. Okay. All right. Thanks. Awesome. Okay. Any other questions? Just one more observation. Those dividends are really impressive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we'll go ahead and um, before we broach the subject, I want to make sure that we address the question that came from, um, was it Chelsea who had the question about the community center? Um, cause I want to make sure we don't miss that before we dive into this. So, um, go ahead and restate your, your, your discussion question. Sure. So really quick, we have, there's always for years, there's been a couple of like officers present and they use an office in the Bremen Darling community center. They don't pay impact for it. They just have access. And with everything in light of all of the things that are happening in the world. We are just hurting to try, wanting to get our finger on the pulse of like, what does the neighborhood uh, think about having cops in the Brentwood Darlington Community Center and in the neighborhood, like the police presence is something that the neighbors want, that they like, that they don't like, that makes them feel uncomfortable. And this might be like way too big of a question for right in this moment, but I'm part of a interrogating white supremacy action group at Impact Northwest and and also the diversity and equity group and just trying to like parse out like what why do we do we need them do we not need them when what does the neighborhood want so i don't know if there's time for this right now but putting that out there do the cops have guns in the office they have guns on them always yes mm -hmm. uh, i wasn't aware they had an office in the building that's news to me um, I was aware that they uh, go in and use the restrooms and things like that. And they mm -hmm. uh, used to attend our meetings sporadically. Um, I would, I'm gonna open this up for a short discussion so we don't get too far off schedule. Anybody like to discuss this? Or um, if 
folks aren't um, aren't ready to discuss this or we don't have enough time for this, we can definitely bring this up at our all committees meeting where we can have a nice long discussion. And oh, cool. this would also be maybe an interesting thing to talk to Impact Northwest about because the office is news to me. So um, yeah. if you'd like to say something, go ahead and just uh, unmute and pop up. I'm seeing a, um, Sean in the chat says, do they actually perform patrols or investigation or is it some kind of business spot? They do other things that I'm pretty sure it's not even clear to us at Impact. I think it's a business spot. I think it's mostly for restroom use and some after hours paperwork. I think originally they came on as sort of like, um, kind of like community, like surveillance, I guess, um, when the neighborhood was rougher, I'm told, but I don't, I don't know. Yeah, we don't know them. They don't have relationships with us as staff either, which is why we're kind of like, do we forge ahead and form relationship or do we just politely ask them to go elsewhere? They don't pay for their office space or anything. But we don't know. How many, um, how many are present? Is it just, you know, one or two on site or are they going in and out throughout the day? I mean. Yeah, they're, they come and go. We don't know when they're coming or going. They're often there after hours. Nobody's there that much right now. Anyways, it's like a couple, we're only allowed to have four people in the building at a time. So it's, you know. It's a little bit like moot at the moment, but when we're all there, they're usually there in the evening. So after most of the staff has gone home, but we also just don't know when they're coming or going. And we also come and go a lot. So, yeah. Chelsea? Yeah. Mary, oh. I see you have a, a oh, uh, let's see, Mary. And then did I see somebody else? Uh, Paola, okay. So I won't say I'm prescient, but um, as I said earlier, we do have a history of community policing in the neighborhood. Right. And as you mentioned, they uh, would stop in and give us a report from time to time. It wasn't as regular as it, as it used to be. But um, I would think now, even if you don't know anything about the history of community policing in the neighborhood, that it would provide a, a, an additional sense of security to the building if there aren't that many people there at any one time, uh, especially if they're coming in after hours. I would think that would be a, tr a tremendous amount of security for that for that area and for the building. I would certainly encourage in Impact Northwest staff to start formula uh, start creating some relationships and maybe even pursue a formal relationship with them. Uh, most of them are probably just beat officers that need a place to use the restroom and write up a report and get the back get back out on the road. So it they may be um, sporadic in and out themselves, but it, it it's worth pursuing, I think. Yeah, thank you for that feedback. That's what we're trying to kind of get a feel for what the thoughts are around it. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to clarify next. What a clarification question. Um, is this a community center that they have this office in? Uh, yeah, Brentwood Darlington Impact Center is a community center not run by Parks and Rec. Okay, I know that not in COVID time, so there's more people coming in and out. I would feel uncomfortable if it was a police um, office in there. I wouldn't feel comfortable coming into here and uh, connecting with the community. Um, but I do think it's important to form that relationship if they are coming in and out anyway. Yeah, I really, I really appreciate that feedback. Also, that's, it's kind of this like thing we're kind of juggling of like, is it important to like, continue inviting them? Or is it like, whoa, why are you here? You're making the folks who are here feel un unsafe. So that's ridiculous. Yeah, it's hard. I don't, yeah, we're just trying to get a feel. I, uh, I, um, so, uh, did somebody else have a comment? I, I, I do. I don't know how to raise my hand. I don't see the option, but so I'll do it like this. Um, Go ahead. You know, right now, um, the police force in Portland is spread <clears throat> pretty thin, and there's a lot of, there are a lot of police officers being called to deal with the, the um, mayhem occurring downtown and in North Portland and Northeast Portland. And um, I have a sense that, that they're not, able to do the kind of uh, street and 
community policing that they've done in the past. And so I think it's wonderful if we could have somebody down here or police who are coming and going from the community center. Uh, I think it would be very good for our sense of security here in the neighborhood. Okay, uh, Shannon, you have your hand up. Go ahead, you're next. Yeah, I'm just curious because um, uh, like how how the neighbor or how the community center is, like I think we've had this discussion before about like who technically owns the community center. And I'm wondering like the history of this because obviously like, I, like now that I think back about it, I remember them coming and going at random times and just, I guess I just never knew why they were in the building to right, begin with. Yeah. So I'm wondering <laughs> what, like where did this, where did the agreement come from? There has to be some kind of documentation about how this happened to begin with. And so I'm just wondering where we would even find that. Cause I don't know if it, like, it's not technically our building. It's not, is it Impact Northwest building? Um, well, officially Impact Northwest rents the building now. We used to own it. I'm mm -hmm. not a we, they used to own it. Um, and now they rent it. Um, but yes, it, it's like Impact's building. Yes. Yeah, and the history, I'm still trying to like learn it myself. Russell, who probably you guys know, yeah. the, um, he has more of a knowledge around it. And so I think it started yeah, really long time ago. And now it's just a matter of figuring out if it's the appropriate match or not. There's other people who can do security, you know, like there's, it's just trying to like get a feel for what's right and what's the best way to approach this. Okay, we have a couple more comments, uh, Kim and then Laura Lee. Uh, Chelsea, I just wanna share that um, while I, I, I feel that there is, it is important to have um, uh, attention to the building in the neighborhood. I think it's also really important to have accountability and some dialogue. And I hope that this is where this question is coming from. It sounds like that's where the question is coming from. I think that uh, police presence in our communities is a two way street. So um, that's just where I stand on that. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your comment. Uh, Laura Lee, you're next. Um, I'm gonna follow up with what uh, Kim just said. When I was, um, I used to be a recreation coordinator at the Montevilla Community Center. And that building is obviously owned by Portland Parks and Rec. And so I, I'm trying to think of, uh, you know, when I when I was a coordinator there, uh, is, 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 is help needed sometimes, especially around a park. So, you know, there's this big issue about a park and nighttime and, you know, However, I as a coordinator, when I would be there, I would feel very uncomfortable not knowing, just having a police officer who is armed walking into my community center while I'm there. I, I, that, that actually wouldn't have happened. They would have had to stop at the front desk and talk to me, tell me why they were there. So I think that it's that unknown. And like Kim said, it's kind of a two-way street. It, it, it's, it could be helpful, but... Um, I understand where you're coming from. That that's that's a little bit of a strange situation, not knowing when they're coming, when they're going, why they're there, how long they're going to be there, et cetera. So that's just my two cents. Thank you. All right. Before I take us too far off schedule, any last minute comments? I just want to thank everybody for sharing that feedback. You guys sound like the mixture of what is happening at Impact Northwest, also. So. <laughs> We will go from there and I will share your thoughts. Thank you so much. You bet. I also think that um, it would be a good idea for um, Impact Northwest and BDNA and maybe Portland Police to all meet around that at some point and see what the actual agreement is. And um, I'd love to bring in some of our community members, maybe Malcolm who works there at the center and a few other folks. So let's, um, BD board, let's plan to make this a uh, topic at our all committees and see um, how we can approach this to be sensitive to everybody in our community so we all feel safe. Sound good? All right. Um, let's go ahead and talk BDNA in 2021. Um, I would like to know what people want from BDNA this year. Um, obviously, we're 
limited in the events we can throw, um, but we do have virtual technology and we can um, do different things. So I, um, if it's all right with everybody, I'm gonna run down the list. And if you have something you would like the neighborhood, you would like to happen in the neighborhood this year or you're passionate about, you're gonna get um, like one to two minutes and we'll be quick and we'll kind of pull in all of that and um, go from there. But I really wanna hear from community about like, what do you want from us this year? What, what do you wanna see? What do you wanna happen? What do you miss us doing? Um, and I'll start with uh, Kim. I think you're the first one on my screen there. And you can pass if you don't, if you're not ready or if you don't want to. <laughs> I love to talk and I'm not prepared to really have anything. Um, there are some things that are on our list, but I'm gonna to defer to Stephanie on those because they're still Stephanie and Lorelai and there might be some things coming down the pike from us. So yeah, excited to be involved. Thank you. All right, continued excellent land use and transportation work. <laughs> uh, let's see, Robert, you're on my list next. Do you have anything that you, um, are hoping to see from the Neighborhood Association this year or wanna see happen in the community? Probably just have to see what happens. If I can travel there with the people I'm supporting, I'd like to get involved. But I'd like to be aware of what's happening anyhow. Well, keep an eye on the land use stuff because we're getting in those new sidewalks and things. They're starting to trickle in slowly. Yeah, okay. uh, that brings us, uh, Stephanie, how about you next? Well, I would like to see us go through some exercises, maybe with um, a professional, a consultant on what our purpose should be. I feel that we don't have um, a specific driving purpose that causes people to say, oh, we need the neighborhood association for that. Uh, you know, a grocery store has a purpose, right? If people need something, they go to the grocery store and they get milk and bread and, and all that, or I don't know, a firing range. Oh, I want to get good with my gun. I'm going to go to the firing range. But um, we don't have a driving specific thing that we do and I would like to ha have some exercises where we where we talk about that and for example uh, the neighborhood associations used to conduct needs assessments that were I, I guess very um, somehow connected with development I, or, or housing needs but it seems to me that we could, engage in needs assessments perhaps every other year or something that would then help us understand what our our purpose should be for example now we know people are hungry right so then it becomes a a, a natural thing to set up as you've done so wonderfully set up the pop-up food pantry plus we support the um the lane the school food pantries and in um but there are other needs that people have. And uh, it would, I think um, through the TGM process uh, over the next 18 months, um, we're going to be getting a very good picture of our area, which may help us formulate how we would conduct a needs assessment or what needs to look for, or I, I don't even know, but I would like to see us, uh, we have so much talent and so much caring going on. And I would love to, to see it um, in a way cha channeled or, out, may, or made something that the neighborhood would automatically turn to, you know, for certain, for certain things. So that is my big wish, please. All right. Uh, for those who don't know, TGM is a transportation growth management grant that um, we received in conjunction with, um, was it BPS, Stephanie, or P uh, Planning Services, or? It's a combination of, of uh, PBOT and BPS. So uh, Bureau of Transportation and Bureau of Planning Services, mm -hmm. and that is a grant that's going to 
um, make a, a plan for the neighborhood so that as future opportunities for um, paving and things like that arrive, we already have a plan in hand to give to the city and they can move forward as funds are available. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Machu just posted the link there in the chat. Thank you, Machu. Um, let's see, uh, Derek, I don't want to miss yes. you there on my screen. Okay, I think I got my mute button off. Um, I'm thinking, um, actually, I'm switching title company as far as labels. I'm going to Fidelity now rather than Chicago title. That shouldn't affect anything. But, uh, uh, but anyway, um, more brochures. I think, thank you for providing me uh, some of the old ones. But I think, uh, I don't know if that's grant money or what that is, but we need to, I'd like to keep doing that. And we're, we've been slowly mailing them out. So. Uh, I, I don't know, the outreach that we're doing to continue to do that. All so, right, you got to go through the stack I still have and then I'll make you new brochures. Okay, it's not that big. <laughs> but you're, you and I are on the same wavelength. I was thinking about new brochures the other day too because I think it's time to update our information and maybe we could go um, get some translated this, year, this time so we can have a few in different languages. Okay. That's, that's my goal is to have multilingual brochures. Yep, so I guess that's as far as what we should do in 2021 is keep doing the mailing outreach. Um, I'm kind of passionate about that because even things like refrigerator magnets, I go into different people's houses as a realtor all the time. And it's interesting, you'll see, you know, it's when it's on the refrigerator, people are looking at it all the time. So anyway. And if you don't have a BDNA refrigerator magnet and you'd like one, just send Derek a message and he'll get you one. There we go. All right, um, and we're probably gonna run a little through the break. Feel free to go off screen and take a break if you need to, because this is um, important and we have lots of voices. So next on my screen is Rebecca. Oh, am I supposed to come up with an idea for 2021? If you, uh, it's a question of if you have something in the neighborhood you're passionate about and wanna work on, or you'd like to see from the Neighborhood Association, just, this is just kind of a, a brainstorming. Right. Um, I'm mostly here to learn more about the community and see what is happening. I'd love to have some better ideas of what to contribute. It probably will in the future. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Claudia, do you have any ideas? Uh, we are, as the, the um, because the garden is here, we have several acres there and a lot of um, a lot of diversity from ornamentals to natives to vegetables and fruits. Um, we want to be able to connect with the neighborhood. This is the neighborhood we're in. Uh, we want to be able to connect with the gardening needs of this neighborhood. So um, we're here less to give ideas than to say, what, what does the neighborhood want in terms of garden education, of garden support and we'd like to be able to then design programs, uh, presentations, events, whatever, uh, whether it's now during COVID and we can do it on Zoom uh, or, and then extending into the future when we can all get together again. So we're here um, much like Rebecca to learn what's, what, where we can fit in, in the neighborhood. Excellent, thank you. Uh, Machu, any ideas that you wanna see from Brentwood Darlington? Yeah, I love, you know, the Learning Garden Labs. We'd love to see that program expanded. And, uh, you know, maybe if they could pursue the Portland Clean Energy Fund or other sources, you know, there's a lot, of, um, despite the challenging economic times we're in, there is a lot of grant money out there. Um, so I think there's a lot of potential in Brentwood Darlington. Um, I mean, you're also getting a greenway, you know, the Ogden Knapp Greenway. It'd be cool if you did like street repair, uh, street intersection murals just so people like, have a way to celebrate this unique uh, thing to the neighborhood. Uh, in the same way too, on Henry, across from um, the nature park, Arrow Heights, you know, there's these walls there along the business. If that could somehow be beautified with like murals that uh, raise awareness about at the Arrow Heights Park, that'd be a great way to just tie in the whole area together. So yeah, there's a lot of potential here. I think there might be some murals or art slated for that in the big uh, project they're doing there. Uh, Pam's not here, but she would know for sure on that. So uh, if you 
need any details on Arrow Heights, I can connect you there. All right, thank you. Um, let's see, Mary, have I called on you yet? No, you've been genius about some of the speakers that you've had, and I hope you'll keep up with that. Uh, we've got all these new um, city commissioners to be introduced to and get acquainted with. So I think there's some prime fodder there for speakers upcoming through the course of the, the year. You and I are on the same wavelength. Uh, Shannon, do you have any ideas for this year? Yeah, I do, sorry. Um, okay, so I've got a couple of things. One, um, I'm thinking about the resource guide and whether or not we want to update that because there's been so many changes because of COVID. I imagine many of the businesses in there have shifted um, and also some of just the general resources that we wanna provide for the community have shifted. So we might wanna consider doing that. And I don't know if we need to apply for another small, I don't think we can apply for another small grant because it's the same project, but I think we might be able to use some communications funds for printing if we were to redo that. Um, that's kind of a question, but also. Um, then also, um, so I run a, um, a urban farm and we sell plants and I have some ideas about partnering with um, the neighborhood association to do like um, plant donations for community members who want to start gardens, but don't have the funds to purchase the plant starts themselves. So something along those lines, I've been thinking, toying with that in my head. Um, and then my last thought is um, kind of showcasing what is happening at the, um, like the LGL, Master Gardeners, Orchard, Community Garden space. I feel like so many people move into the neighborhood and have no idea what is happening there. And it's really cool and unique to Brentwood Darlington. So I don't necessarily have the best skills at this, but I feel like somebody has to have like, uh, like, skills to like maybe make and edit some kind of video or something that showcases like Black Futures Farms and LGL and everything that's happening there so that we could um, kind of do some promotion for them and the programs that they're all doing there. And maybe some of the other like farms and um, stuff that uh, other neighbors are doing around food production. <laughs> awesome. Uh, on the note of Black Futures Farm, the interview we did with them is on our YouTube if you're interested in um, hearing about what they were doing late last year. And um, I believe they applied for the Clean Energy Fund, Machu. Uh, Stephanie, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we wrote a letter for that. Yeah, no, we did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Lynn, you're next if you want to go. I don't really have a, when I first heard your question, I thought you had said, what would you like to see in the neighborhood? And I wrote down immediately like streets and sidewalks. Uh, and then I kind of understood the question more as to what the BDNA is to do. But um, I do agree with uh, the points as far as like really pretty much everything everybody has already said and the ideas that we've had. The LGL, I think is a great, you know, program, um, yeah. Yeah, and I do think that we could use some communications fund money to reprint brochures that should be a good thing. Excellent. Yeah. And I also uh, agreed with Stephanie's uh, comment too. Yeah. Awesome. All right, uh, next, uh, Paola, do you have anything you'd like to see from BDNA? Yeah, I'm not sure if BDNA was part of this. This happened before my time, but I know that Southeast Uplift did an unconscious bias training and I think that's just helpful for anyone working with the community um, as a way to really promote inclusivity and welcoming everyone in the community to be part of organizations, through board associations. Um, and I know we can provide some uh, information on that, some references. We hosted some, um, uh, co-hosted some trainings with the Portland United Against Hate last Perfect, uh, yeah. Last early last year and the year before. Is there a way we could do something similar maybe? I think so, yeah. I know Southeast Uplift was thinking about um, maybe setting something up with, if people were interested. So that's something I can talk more about with them. 
Awesome. Thank you. Sorry, I'm taking notes over here. I want to make sure I remember something. Um, let's see, Eli, what about you? How can uh, BDNA partner with, uh, is it Rep Reardon that you're here with? Yeah, Rep Reardon's office. And, uh, you know, honestly, I think one of the biggest um, things that the representative is focused on this year is increasing um, presence in the community and kind of increasing that two-way communication with constituents. So, you know, when things come up at the state level, especially now that we're doing uh, virtual testimonies and virtual meetings and everything, I really hope that folks will join us in taking advantage and getting an active um, process in the legislative process here at the state level. Excellent. Yeah, we didn't uh, get to see Rep Reardon in, in 2020, so hopefully we'll get to host him again. Let's see, who have I missed here? Uh, Mary B, did you have, want to speak at all? Oh, no, thank you. I'm just listening this evening. Thank you. Um, Sean, would you like to speak? All right. Sorry, I had to find my oh, unmute button. No, go ahead. Uh, I was unmuting to say, no, I don't have anything to say. <laughs> all right, no problem. Uh, did I miss anyone? My list sometimes shifts around. Uh, Maria, I'll see. did you get to talk? And Stephanie. Okay, so let's do Maria and then Stephanie. And um, then if I missed anybody else, we'll get there. Oh, Laura Lee, yes. Um, yeah, mainly, let's see, I, I totally agree with Stephanie. I think it's worth it digging a little deeper. Um, this year and maybe focus on that, you know, what is what is it we are here for? What, who do we want to be? What is our purpose? I think that's absolutely necessary and great to dig a little deeper. And that goes hand in hand with my first thought was like, I, I'm really interested to see how can we engage more neighbors to participate and to reach out more. We're such a big neighborhood. I think it's like 12,000 households and um, I see the same eight faces which I love to see, don't get me wrong, but it's um, just not representing the neighborhood very well. And I don't know how to change that and how to, how to improve that. Um, that Facebook group was a try, but it's kind of <laughs> kind of the same people again. So <laughs> um, I don't know, I think we should uh, continue to find ways to reach out a broader um, representation of who lives in Brightwood Darlington or works there. And uh, yeah, that's worth pursuing in 2021, I think as well. I agree. I would love to see more than just the same faces as much as I love you all. More volunteers is always better and more voices is better. Um, Can I make a really quick comment on that? Oh, ahead, I'm just noticing that um, we adding the Zoom, like changing the format um, and doing it virtually, we've added a lot of people who otherwise haven't been able to participate. And I'm hoping that even post pandemic when we go back to be doing things in person that we can incorporate this kind of component to it so that people can continue to participate absolutely this yeah. way as well <clears throat> yeah i think that um going back to not recording our meetings or making them accessible is not an um an option like now that we have the technology why would we go back when we could just enhance uh in-person meetings with it so Definitely agree on that. In fact, um, there's at least, I think, three people here who otherwise couldn't attend. So, um, uh, Steph, Lenny, you were next on my list. And then Laura Lee, and then anybody else I missed, we'll go from there. Well, I, 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 I already spoke up, but I wanted to know what you want. Oh, I want everybody else to go first. Laura Lee's next. Okay. Um, so I 100% agree with Maria. I have a little list here and basically on my list it said unity and pride in Brentwood Darlington and trying to reach out to those outer edges of people that um, that wouldn't that don't normally know that we're here and want them to be a part of us and 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 find out who they are. Um, I live in a neighborhood. My neighbors are uh, more on the um, uh, senior. Uh, side of our neighbors and um, I wish that they were here. I wish that they would come and 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 talk and um, they've got so many stories and so many wonderful, they have such a history here and our neighborhood is changing right now. And so 
I would love to see like this pride of Brentwood Darlington coming together. Um, and I was talking to uh, my neighbor and she found a drawing of our houses that were built a different year than we thought that they were built. And then I started thinking we should have like a, a, a picture museum, you know, like go around to all the neighbors and see all the old pictures on history just to, to develop some sort of connection with people and a connection with this neighborhood as it's changing. I don't, I don't know how to do it, but that's what it's like Maria said, I, I, that's what I would like to see as well as, as BDNA, just connecting with the neighbors as much as we can. Awesome, let's see. Did I miss anyone? Um, Chelsea Campbell, did you get a chance to go? Um, I didn't, but I, this is really cool to be a part of, and I love all the ideas. I didn't even know there was a place to voice all these ideas, even though I should have known. Um, and I like the idea of paved streets and sidewalks and murals and art and all of that stuff. And yes, it's all great. Okay. Did I miss anybody who wanted a chance? Okay. No, I have something I want to say. Go ahead. Okay. I'm so sorry. Um, you know, what, what, one of the things I would like to see the land use committee do, and, uh, and I'll talk more about land use when we get to, you know, the reports, but the city has declared a climate emergency, right? And so I have been looking through the climate action plan to try to find out what sorts of things we can do here uh, in Brentwood Darlington to, su to support the city's plan and to, to do our part. And um, so I would like to see that be something that we start working on in 2021. Um, and then I had this food idea that I wanted to, um, to convey to Claudia growth. And I, I'm, I can, do you mind if I convey it? And I'm afraid I'll forget it if- Go um, for it. Okay, so we have these uh, different uh, ethnic populations here. And I thought it'd be really cool, especially if we could get the community center to back with our, that commercial kitchen, that if we could, um, Maybe the master gardeners could work with some of our neighbors who are say, I don't know, from Cambodia or whatever and grow Cambodian stuff in one big plot. And then we cook, they cook it for us so that we can see what um, some couple of Cambodian dishes are that are vegetable based. And, um, and then we highlight those, those people from who helped advise the garden and then oversaw the cooking and you know that kind of, I mean it's obviously not a, a well thought out idea yet but it could it could um it could be kind of exciting to have a, a you know one year a Cambodian um a food garden and then next year Vietnamese uh, and after that um I don't know Somali or whatever and um uh it would be something we people could come and see growing, and then later they get to um, partake of the, the the food that via these ethnic recipes cooked in our kitchen when we get it back. All right, Stephanie, that is absolutely something that we have talked about, uh, and that's one reason that I'm here is to try and uh, find a way to make those connections so that we know what to plant, so that we know who the people are, uh, so we know what the demographics of our community, our Brentwood Darling community that we're part of. Uh, we, th that is absolutely something we've talked about. So uh, yay, let's do it. Oh, okay, yeah, no, that could be a lot of fun. Oh. And, um, okay. Okay, thank you, Chelsea. All right. Um, so I just want to go over the ideas a little bit because uh, most of the ones that I was thinking about ended up in here too, which I figured they would. Um, so what I'm seeing here is I'm seeing a lot of interest in community connection, connecting the garden with the with our neighbors, connecting with neighbors who we don't already connect with, new brochures, new information. Um, I'm seeing that we're looking for connection with our public, uh, with our representatives. So um, 
doing another series of inviting uh, our elected officials, maybe might be on our, our radar this year. Um, I'm seeing uh, land use, transportation and climate um, factoring in big here and um, connecting with the history of the neighborhood before it changes uh, too much more so we uh, don't lose the, the history and knowledge that we currently have living here. Did I miss anything? Okay. Um, so what I, um, if this is all right with everybody, we'll kind of compile this list and then we can talk on it more in detail at our all committees meeting, which is the third Tuesday of the month at 5 p.m. here on Zoom. And that's going to be the uh, 19th this month. So if you want to be part of turning this list of ideas into some interesting things that we're going to do this year, come to all committees on January 19th at 5 p.m. Any other ideas or things like that before we take a little break? Okay, so, but we did also suggest discussing a a kind of central focus or purpose. What us. is our purpose? Yep, yeah. that's at the top of my list here. Okay. And I'd love to connect maybe with um, Southeast Uplift or, uh, on that in the near future about um, the, what was it, the, the assessment or the, the survey that used to go out or different ways we could uh, connect with our neighborhood there and figure out our purpose. Okay. All right, anything else on this topic? All right, I know we're running a little behind schedule. Um, the next part of the meeting is more check-in and um, kind of getting caught up on our BDNA business. So um, everybody is welcome to stay, but I always put that little disclaimer out there in case you are falling asleep in your chair or have other things you need to do. So I'm going to give us a five minute break to stretch and refill waters and do all that. And we will be back at 820 to dive into our slightly off agenda. So I'm going to pause the recording. I'll see everybody in five minutes. Thank you, Chelsea. All right, we're gonna um, do a board member check-in next. Uh, I wanted to bring up a couple of board member um, changes that are going on. I got an email from Tina and she is resigning from the board due to how busy her life is right now, but she is going to stay on as our cleanup coordinator. So we're, we're thrilled she's doing that. She's really great at that, um, but this will give her the time she needs to do what she's gotta so um and then pam will be back next month i believe for those of you who don't know her mother passed um just recently and so she will be returning i believe next month so board members i'm just going to kind of go through and check in with how are you um, and where are you at in your ability to volunteer right now? Because I wanna make sure that as we think about all of those amazing lofty um, neighborhood goals we talked about and ideas earlier, that we actually have the capacity and, um, and the interest in doing uh, those things and that we have enough people. <laughs> Um, and then uh, what your priority is as a BDNA board member, uh, the passion project you're working on or your focus. So I'll start um, at the top of my list and just go down. Stephanie, you are on the top of my screen. Oh, I just knew it. I just knew you would <laughs> first. Thanks. Ben. Um, I'm, uh, my, my volunteer schedule is pretty full. I spend a lot of time every month uh, on the land use committee because we've, um, we're covering a lot of topics now and I do a tremendous amount of reading so that I can, um, can learn what's going on and, and, and be a better um, 
chairperson. And now um, uh, I've begun working on SEAM again with Machu now that the TGM, Transportation Growth Management Planning Effort, is about to uh, begin rollout. Uh, and so um, I expect to be in, engaged with, um, with, with, with the city and Machu and um, uh, the other neighborhoods as we work on community outreach and, um, uh, and getting people's, getting ideas from people about what they want for our future here in, in our area, the Woodstock, Mount Scott, Arlita, Foster Powell, Lentz, and Brentwood, Darlington areas. And then I am on a pricing task force for the city that is, um, it's essentially, it's um, um, creating equity in mobility for the city of Portland. And that requires a lot of reading and a monthly meeting. So I am pretty, pretty busy right now. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Laura Lee, you're next on my screen here. Um, I am doing pretty well. Um, I'm taking on a couple of new things that Stephanie will talk to you about uh, with Kim and Stephanie. And um, uh, so that, that, that's going, that has been keeping me a little bit busy and probably will keep me busier in the future. So I'm kind of excited for that. Um, that's probably about all the capacity I have though uh, for volunteering outside of my day job, which has picked up as well. So um, I'm, doing, I'm doing well. Um, weekends are my time for the neighborhood association. I have a hard time uh, during the week I'm gonna throw it out there. Seven to nine is 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 are difficult hours for me at night. But um, uh, but yeah, I think I'm I'm doing good. My priorities right now are to continue uh, the secretarial duties um, and also to pick up a few other volunteer uh, opportunities with uh, land use and transportation. Excellent. I think that's uh, plenty. <laughs> All right, um, Derek, next on my okay. list. Yeah, as far as what time available or? Uh, how are you doing? What are you, what's your capacity for volunteering and what's your priority with BDNA right now? Right, I think, um, yeah, going forward, uh, yeah, just uh, there's some tools I have. I think more the neighborhood outreach, especially with people that have moved into the neighborhood. Um, I've come across some tools recently. I've subscribed to some services where I'm able to, have, I don't know, it's, it's, um, it's legit, but you access like phone numbers and cell phone numbers of people. And I thought I do this oftentimes for work. I could easily do this with new neighbors. Um, I think right now is not the time to be knocking on doors <laughs> necessarily of people. Um, and uh, so I'm just, yeah. I'm just thinking of new ways just to reach people, especially people that are new to the neighborhood that have been here like two years or less and, and see if we can get them to participate. That's kind of my interest. Excellent. Um, let's see, who's my next board member? Shannon, you're the next board member on the list. All right. Um, so I'm doing pretty good. I have somewhat limited capacity at the moment with a newborn and a toddler at home. Um, but I, I do want to focus on, Chelsea, how many um, resource guides do you think we have left? Uh, less than 10. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Um, so I, then I was given those things out all summer. <laughs> no, I'm so glad. I'm glad. I've just been wondering if I should prioritize updating that. Because um, I can do things that are just like, um, it's a little bit harder for me to be like on a schedule to commit to like being somewhere at a specific time, but doing work where I can do it at night or, you know, in little spots of time is fine. So updating that um, I'm willing to take on. And then um, um, 
I really, I really want to do that project with um, just trying to connect the food type things that we have going on in the neighborhood and maybe creating some kind of marketing communication type thing for those. So that's where I, that's kind of my uh, priority. Awesome. Lynn, you're next on the list. Okay, um, I think I'm going to actually go a little backwards on, on the list. Uh, my priorities with the BDNA right now are basically the treasurer duties. I mean, that's what's my focus. That's what takes the most time. Um, I also have a day job, so it's, and it's the same thing, it's accounting. So it's, it's a little bit, um, it's difficult to do. It just takes extra time. So sometimes it just kind of feels like that's all I'm working on. Like I work during the week in my accounting job and then on the weekend, like, more accounting oh <laughs> so, yeah so it's um you know uh, i don't have a lot of a, availability to volunteer outside of the the you know time that i'm already spending towards the treasurer stuff i did get a, a little bit of a break on the last couple of months because we didn't have a lot of activity but um it'll start to pick up with like the fiscal sponsorship you know form and the communications fund and all that stuff it'll kind of um, just be, you know, those are the things that I will be concentrating on. Awesome. And I just want to, again, props for the treasure. You are amazing. We would be lost Thank without you. you. <laughs> um, let's see who has not gone yet. Have I missed any board members? I guess I'm the next one. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm doing okay. We'll go with that. Uh, my volunteer ability is a little more limited than it normally would be because uh, I am my kiddo's distance learning buddy who sits with him all day. And uh, so I can mostly fit things in kind of online and like uh, others not on a schedule. Um, my priorities this year are, um, are doing more media and I'd really like to um, host a series of speakers again. I think that was extremely helpful in connecting our neighbors with their elect elected representatives and I, folks really like that. So, um, and really supporting all of you. So um, while we are still on the slide, I want to check in. Um, did I miss anybody <laughs> that's here? All right. And somehow I've put us back on schedule. We can move on to the next part of our agenda. I have one quick thing. I just want to voice it so that I don't forget. Go ahead. Last year, I, uh, we talked about potentially updating the website and I still want to do that. I have it in my head that I want to like redo our website, I just gotta find the time to make that happen. If we keep it on WordPress, I'll work with you on it. <laughs> ah, okay. All right, that'll okay. be one of our priorities. We'll, we'll work on that. We can, we can revamp it. All right, um, anything else before we move on from our check-in? I have, I, I did, I have something. Go ahead, Stephanie. Oh, okay, so um, I have a list of uh, three letters that I thought that BDNA might like to send out. One is to um, Marty Stockton's old bureau, the Bureau of Planning and Sustainability. They've taken a big hit financially because of, of COVID as the entire city has but they have um, gone out of their way to maintain their, um, their liaison program. They, they have three or four staff members who are taking turns liaising with different parts of the city of Portland. And they've made a big effort there. And I would like to uh, just send them a thank you for doing that. If I draft something and you can sign it, it can go out under your name. Um, for, um, because it's a BDA, BDNA, not land use. Since it's not in support or um, against anything, I don't think we need a vote on it unless there's any objection to 
uh, reaching out and spreading some goodwill to a bureau that's been helpful. Sounds good. Um, Stephanie, if you would like a BDNA card to send that in, um, I do have those uh, handmade cards from Gail. So, you know, I still have never seen those. Well, I can come by and, and they're about this big. <laughs> they're like a, I want to say like a four by six size, maybe. So, okay. Awesome. Um, I also thought that we could just reach out to the new city council in general. This is to just call attention to ourselves and welcome, welcome the council in its new reconstituted form and say that we're here to be helpful and, um, and supportive and wish them well or something. I can come up with some words and you can fix them. What do you think? Um, we could do all of that as we invite them to come speak at one of our meetings this year, because I'd like to um, invite all of them to come and speak at some point. Does that work? Well, that's a little different, though. By the time we got to that, we would be on to specific city issues and, and so on. I just thought some little general little letter of welcome and we're here to support you and work with you. Like a, an again, I just, I could, again, um, we could put on one of those cards or something. Okay. Um, you and I can work on that. We'll make sure and do a little introduction because it is a, a new council and we'd like to make sure they know about us. We could send them a resource guide if they don't have one. Yeah, no, I think that would be good. And um, yeah, it is basically, you know, to, um, to call attention to ourselves so that Going forward, if they hear our name, they'll, they'll have a positive association because they got a nice card from us. <laughs> Something. And then um, a third thing is um, the, um, you know, Joanne Hardesty is going, has been assigned to the, to Ockel, right? And, and um, I wanted, I am hoping that she will pick up that program that that was three years in the making called Community Connect, which was designed to revamp the neighborhood associations in very positive ways. Uh, Amanda Fritz began implementing it. And, um, and then it's gone by the wayside, but I mean, so many hundreds of people from around across Portland participated in the making of that uh, plan. And I would like to see it revived uh, I would like to ask Joanne Hardesty to please consider um, implementing Community Connect because it's an excellent plan and, and it seems like a terrible waste to discard all the thoughts and ideas of hundreds of Portland residents. And, um, and it Stephanie? has a very heavy equity. Uh, yes, who's that? Uh, this is Derek, I have a question. How did that, uh, how did it go by the wayside? Can you give us some history? Well, Amanda Fritz was beginning to implement it. Um, it recommended um, um, broadening the, um, the universe of the neighborhood associations by adding in some of the equity groups around the, um, that are here in Portland, some of the identity groups. And so Amanda Fritz was doing that little by little, but then, um, then the program was taken away from her. O the Office of Neighborhood Involvement was taken away from her and it was given to Chloe Udaley, who, uh, okay. no. who just chose not to um, continue implementing a program that actually lays out all of the goals that Chloe supposedly had. So mm -hmm. I don't know why, but um, it's an excellent plan. And um, I, I, I would just love to see it, um, see it actually carried out. I, I hate having people put in tons of volunteer hours and come up with a really good product. And then, and then it just gets forgotten. I, I hate that. And um, where could so, we where could we learn more about Community Connect? Could I oh, put that? Okay. In so let me. I can. Um, uh, I have a. <clears throat> it's online. 
and I can get I can um, get you a the URL, and I can also have Chelsea post. I can make a synopsis of it, and I can have Chelsea post something on the website too for people. Right. Yeah. So what if we get more information on that, and then it wouldn't hurt to send an email to Joanne's office and just ask her. Um, if she's aware of Community Connect, which I'm sure she is, and if there are plans to implement it or use it to um, inform the next part of the, the process. So hey, let me draft something, Chelsea, for you, you to, um, to look at and you can fix it and then we can send that to her. I think uh, getting information on this is probably where we need to be at and mm -hmm. can make decisions from there. Um, any yeah, but didn't yes but didn't you just say in addition to learning more about community connect us learning more then at, simultaneously at the same time we would write to hardesty or later you want to write to her um so you know about community connect and a few others of do so we'll educate the board on community connect and then at the same time we can see if um it's on her radar. Okay, fine. Okay, so the two, those are two simultaneous threads. Okay, fine. Yeah. All right, good. Okay, so anyway, that's, and then there was one final thing and I can, I can do this, but um, you know, because of the difficulty that Kim had getting in touch with us when she was concerned about uh, development on her street, I want to check the websites, uh, BPS, um, Bureau of Development Services, ACL, PBOT, and then also um, verify things with Southeast Uplift that they have our contact information correct. Because sometimes it isn't. I mean, I know I'm listed at ACL as, as holding a position that I don't hold. And uh, so we yeah. need- We've done some, some corrections a couple of times, so. If you come up with all the inconsistencies, um, we can send an email out and try to get it corrected. Okay. So, okay. Anything else on that before we move forward? No. All righty. Uh, committee reports. I know committees didn't meet last week and, or last week, last month. Could be last year. Um, and we do have our committees here, which board members know about, but neighbors might not. These are technically the committees we have. Not all of them are currently active due to lack of bodies. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so land use and transportation meets the second Thursday, seven to nine, and all the other committees meet at what we call the all committees meeting. And that's the third Tuesday from five to seven. So that's the one, it's a little bit earlier and it's, um, those are both more laid back discussion based meetings. Let's see. Okay, but I, I do have some things I'd like to say from land use. Well, that's great because you. Oh. Next <laughs> so okay, I'm going to no, let you go no. ahead and uh, have some time. Go ahead. Okay, all right. Let's see what time is it? 20 to 9. And, and um, all right, fine. <clears throat> um, first, I would like to. Um, speak briefly about the transportation growth management planning effort. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, two bureaus in the city of Portland on our behalf uh, sought a very large grant from the state of Oregon that will give provide 18 months of planning time to help the residents of the um, inner Southeast here develop a plan for their area that once the city has adopted, it um, will allow for, it, it will more easily divert funds to us for things like paving and sidewalks and bicycle lanes and safe pedestrian crossings and flashing beacons. And um, um, we are also um, concerned about anti-displacement measures. Uh, we have a lot of people living here who have been, who, who have retreated from more expensive parts of Portland and we don't wanna make them retreat anymore even as we 
improve our, our infrastructure here. And um, let's see, there's, and also a third aspect, um, which relates to having a 20 minute neighborhoods as they're called or walkable neighborhoods. Um, you know, we don't have very many services or shops in our, our area and we have to drive up to Woodstock or down to um, into Clackamas. But uh, one of the things that will be looked at in this plan is rezoning to attract businesses to our area so that we rely, so that there are times when we can walk to a store and get bread and milk or whatever it is we need, whatever um, um, services and shops settle here rather than drive and make our neighborhood um, just a, a nicer place to, to live in because there'll be different transportation modalities that, ever, that will give people a, a choice and um, a choice in access to, to um, services that, that they can use. So it's going to be zoning for services and shops, anti-displacement and then transportation infrastructure needs basically are the three threads of this planning effort. And it will, it is in early stages now. We're going to have a meeting on January 27th and I will um, let everybody know um, and they can um, join it if they like. But Marty Stockton, who's the project manager is going to speak at the meeting and talk to us about um, um, uh, what, what, how the, how the project is going to roll out. And, and primarily at the beginning, they're going to talk about um, how they're going to make sure that they take into account um, um, equity matters as, as we go forward. So just to tell you that that's um, coming up and it's going to be an 18 month effort and we're very excited about it. We um, also, uh, we um, are very grateful to PBOT and um, uh, because they rescued it because the pandemic has caused the city to lose so much money. Uh, we were stood to lose this grant or lose the, lose the ability to do the project. But um, the staff said that they would take on the work that they were gonna have a consultant do. This is, puts a huge burden on staff, but the consultant for uh, funds were diverted to staff so that, um, and they will do the work and this saved this planning effort. So um, I think uh, our, our SEAM coalition can send a letter of gratitude to, um, to PBOT for doing this. It's gonna put a lot of, um, of work on, on the shoulders of the staff there. And we're, we're really grateful because we need this planning effort. Um, otherwise we're, we're just going to be underneath the gentrification um, roller and get smashed flat by that and, and not have any say over our future here. And they, uh, again, for those who don't know about it, um, the TGM planning effort, I mentioned this earlier, is um, the area is Woodstock, Mount Scott, Arleta, Brentwood, Darlington, um, the southern parts of Foster Powell and the western part of Lentz is the planning area. And so we'll, you'll, you'll be hearing more about this over the months to come as, as the effort gets underway. Um, okay, so on to another um, a subject, and this has to do with a success on the speeding front, street speeding. Uh, for years, um, people who lived along um, Southeast Flavel Drive have been appealing to PBA to that they have um, more and more traffic and it's going faster and faster every day. And it's uh, more and more dangerous and it's more and more noisy. And I'm happy to report that because of their hard work and this is Kristen Parker, uh, one is um, uh, kind of spearheaded this and, and uh, established a relationship with Scott Cohen and spent a lot of time um, uh, you know, communicating with him and so on. And anyway, there's been a successful outcome in that 
um, the city, the Peabot has um, uh, erected speed limit signs that reduce the speed from 25 to 20 and 20 miles per hour. And so this is going to make a difference. People are still going to speed, but now, you know, the, um, we can hold them <laughs> to a different uh, standard and we will um, eventually be able to completely, I think, control uh, the, the speed on that. That's supposed to be a local neighborhood street. It's not supposed to be a big throughway, which is what it's being used for now. And um, people are, are leaving Johnson Creek Boulevard and coming up and going along along Flavel Drive in order to get over to 52nd Avenue, but um, we're gonna make it so they don't want to anymore. And then that's gonna make it easier to get to the park. So we're gonna be continue our advocacy, but I wanted to say that um, because of these neighbor, uh, these resident efforts, you know, there was a really nice initial outcome for Southeast uh, Flavel Drive. So uh, kudos to Kristen Parker and others who live on Flavel Drive. They, they, they did good. All right, so then uh, on to another um, wonderful effort. And this is um, very connected with the, the climate focus that, that I uh, want to achieve for, for land use. And it has to do with trees, the trees of Brentwood Darlington we have uh, two um, wonderful volunteers, Laura Lee Cole and Kim Hill, and they have been working so hard to gather information about um, uh, the city's regulations that govern tree preservation in the city of Portland. And their goal is to, um, to create a flyer that the BDNA has agreed to um, disseminate to all residents and the flyer will explain the regulations surrounding tree preservation and removal and inform residents how to report observed violations. And that will just be a first step, but it will be very informative to the neighborhood and it will also let developers know that we're watching them so that they don't cut down as many trees as they seem to be cutting, that we have the sense that they're cutting down. And I wanted to share with you that one of the wonderful discoveries that Kim and Laura Lee have made is a website called Trees for Life. And the URL is treesforlifeoregon.org. And it's an amazing website that is completely devoted to not just preserving trees, but increasing tree canopy throughout the city of Portland. And um, we definitely absolutely have to have, preserve our trees and increase canopy uh, because of the climate crisis changes that are already um, afflicting us. So uh, I, I became very excited about this website. It's beautiful, it's terribly informative and I, I recommend to everyone that they go and have a look at it. It's going to be very helpful to us. And so um, Kim and Laura Lee are continuing their work because what the work that they do then suggests other things that need to be done. And I will save um, two of their projects for the next um, round. So you can be in suspense, but they're really wonderful. And I uh, want to thank Kim and Laura Lee for their hard work and um, it's just, it's, it's going to make life more wonderful here in Brentwood Darlington because we're gonna save trees. Thank you, Kim, and thank you, Laura Lee. Definitely, thank you to our volunteers, Kim and Laura Lee, and thank you to Stephanie for keeping the Land Use and Transportation Committee going. Uh, Laura Lee put in the chat that on the Clackamas side near Bell Station, they've now reduced the speed from th 35 to 25 as well. So that oh. that speed going up there. Oh, really? That oh, because Scott Cohen said he was going to reach out to Clackamas, and uh, so he got them to change it. Oh, that is wonderful. Yeah, that's I wonderful. noticed it because uh, that's I go down that street almost daily, and about a week ago, I noticed that yep, the speed limit signs going down the hill um, towards Bell Station, 
is now 25 and they've got flags on it. So people, and it says new sign, new speed. And then I noticed that when I got down to the bottom of the hill, it continues on up the hill going past. Oh, oh wonderful. Oh, yeah. so, okay. So our advocacy here then ended up uh, in affecting things in Clackamas County to their benefit. That's wonderful news. Thank you, Chelsea. Awesome. Well, I, Laura, <laughs> put that in the chat. I just wanted to make sure it showed up. Oh, okay. And I have one, one more thing to tell. All right. We're almost out of time. So be quick. Okay. The, um, the Springwater Corridor connector that goes through Flavelle Park is almost done. I rode my bike down there to have a look at it today. The, the path through the park is done. And then that miserable road to right to the south of the park that had those gigantic, you know, two foot deep potholes in it. It's completely paved over. There's a beautiful sidewalk and they were planting trees along the sidewalk when I was there. <laughs> I almost called you Kim and Laura Lee, but <laughs> oh, you should see these sticks in the ground. Okay, um, that's, I'm done now. Stephanie, would you grab pictures next time you're over there so we can put them up on the website? That would be awesome. I, I did get some photos. Oh, yeah, okay. let's get some, some pictures up. Um, all right, we don't have too much more time. Do we have any other committees that want to report um, miscellaneous business? Next month we can do minutes approval and all the, the formal stuff, but I wanted to give everybody January to kind of figure out where we're at. So, um, neighbors who aren't board members, you can feel free to jump in if there's anything we missed that you wanted to bring up. Um, otherwise, we can uh, we can probably be about done for the night. Can I just uh, say one thing? Go ahead, Stephanie. Uh, thank you for giving us December off. And I, I was wondering if we could make that a tradition. It just it just was a fabulous to to not you know to to be able to go and read the climate action plan instead of you know doing the usual meeting preps and so on. So thank you, Chelsea. Yes, thank you. I think that's definitely um, up for for discussion this year. Uh, I think that having a month off maybe refreshed us all a little bit um, and let us think about you know what we miss when we're not doing EDNA meetings. Um, so I, I'm all for that. Let's uh, let's decide that for sure. Not at on the nine o'clock at night. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, anything else um, before we end our recording for the evening? I just wanna make sure um, that we got everybody who wanted to say something this evening um, and remind you that these happen every month, maybe not December, but every month at 7 p.m. the first Thursday of the month, we'll continue virtually. And even when we go back to in-person, we'll find a way to keep it online somehow, so. All right, uh, board members, if you can stick around just a little bit after the recording, have a neighbor who wants to chat about something but um, not be part of the public meeting. And um, I want, oh, Eli says in the comments that it was uh, great to hear from us all. And uh, Eli, go ahead and uh, start looking at your calendar. We'd love to host Rep Reardon here pretty soon. Um, all right, I'm gonna end the recording for the night. Thank you everybody for attending and remind, a reminder to come to land use and transportation next Thursday and all committees the following Tuesday. Have a great night, everyone. Great.